Hello, everybody. Welcome along to the Blue Monday podcast and an impromptu video for an impromptu fixture it is. that we did not expect to be having. So when wow. it did go to Blackpool, I thought mm. there's only one man that I want to speak to here. So uh, please welcome to the podcast, Mr. Lee Charles of Lee Charles TV. Lee, how are you doing, Good morning, sir? everyone. I'm fine. I'm fine. We are, I don't know, we, we, we set off with such hope. As you know, we were, we put £20 on Blackpool to win the league. We were so, <laughs> we we're so excited about Critchley coming from Liverpool and all these young, the young stars who we were signing these quick forwards. And uh, we had a pre season with Everton and we, uh, we, you know, we were 3 0 up in 10 minutes and we're all sat there thinking, Hang on, I mean, what's going on here? We're three 0 up in ten minutes. This, oh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna walk the league, and uh, it's not quite worked out that way so far. We have oh, been battering dear. teams, but we can't score. That's the problem. It's the final third for us. So interesting. So Critchley is now looking a bit, a bit like a man under pressure, as you do, and I bet he's wishing he was still at uh, Liverpool under twenty three academy with no pressure on him at all. But uh, he's finding he's finding life a little bit tough. Uh, he looks like he's scratching his head because he can't understand how, how you know the good football we're playing, but the fact we're just not winning at all. You know, and our, our defense. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll, 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 we'll it, talk it about feels, it. It feels I like you've just my chest all the time just because of shed the shed the weight of the world. First of all, just give a quick <laughs> little plug for your channel and where. Um, Ipswich fans might um, might want to yeah. find your stuff during the season if they want to check in with Blackpool. Yeah, it's called the Lee Charles TV, which is on YouTube. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. I, I kind of fell into football vlogging. I, I wasn't expecting to do that. That was never the plan. Um, I can tell you all about that if you want, about why my channel started and why. But that's where we are. We're a Blackpool FC channel um, covering Blackpool home and away all the time. We did all the games last season until COVID stopped us. Um, and now you've Jane... done none of them. <laughs> Say again. And now you've done none of them. The yeah, I've done none of them. Yeah, but we're doing live, you know, live watch alongs and stuff. So, you know, we do, we do the watch alongs. The they're they're no. quite popular. People have to suffer me going. Apparently, I'm the. Uh, Jane got a, a text with the other day to say that she's the glass half full and I'm the glass half empty. So, oh, <laughs> so okay. I well, I, I will <laughs> endeavor to, to make you positive. Just a quick question. Well, I woke up this morning. Uh, to yeah. be greeted with a tweet telling me that Paul Lambert was the League One Manager of the Month. So just wow. quickly, do you feel more hopeful or less hopeful that you're now facing the presumably now cursed Manager of the Month? That's a great, that, that's the best news Blackpool fans can hear, <laughs> honestly. That, that's a kiss of death, isn't it, for you? The League Manager of the Month. There's nothing worse, is there? So how many times... Oh, but- Believe me, Lee, <laughs> believe me, that there, there, there's not much you can do to make Ipswich fans more um Nervous. more cautious <laughs> in their in their opinions. Um just quickly, so hmm. Ipswich were due to play Charlton. Who were because Blackpool must have been due to play another team that would have been Sunderland. Ah, Sunderland. Sunderland. Mm, okay, so this has yeah. probably worked out quite well because last season, Lee, I don't know if hmm. you were sort of following it, we were yeah. the team that was cancelling all the um, international break games. And then it yeah. well and truly came back to um, bite us on the ass. Uh, if Blackpool were in this position, would you just want to see them play through and not cancel anything and keep the momentum going? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. If I was winning and you are, you know, you've set off quite well. I mean, I know you were pegged back on Saturday with a draw up until then you was, you know, you were, you know, steamrolling, weren't you? Three, was it three wins on the bounce? You had to top of the league. Yeah. And yeah, no goals so you just want either, it to yeah. keep going. Don't you know, you want it to keep going, but we on the other hand are the other way around. <laughs> we're we we're all thinking, what are we doing here? Why, why are we rearranging a game with bloody Ipswich when, when, when we can't win a game? <laughs> uh, Saturday as well was, in a way, we need a game just to get it out of our system. Although we did play, you know, a midweeker in the cup, um, which again, it's just another 
game I don't want to talk about, but I'm going to have to. <laughs> You're going to just quickly. Um, just can you just set the context? Can you just smart and Ipswich fans up about Critchley mm. then? Uh, how yeah. this how this came about? Who he is? And where he came from. We'd never heard of him, basically. That was the thing. <laughs> good <laughs> good never, honesty. He came completely from left field. We weren't, we were, you know, we had Simon Grayson, um, Larry, you know, Larry Grayson. Uh, Always who, gets linked with Ipswich as well. Yeah. And he was a legend at Blackpool. You know, he was a legend. He got us up out of the, uh, out of this division in, into Three the, promotions uh, from League One. With yes, Preston he has. Had, and with yeah. Leeds as well. So yeah. the, the guy for League One. Sorry, go so ahead, Luke. So, so he had form, uh, you know, and he was a favourite. Even if he did leave us at a time when, we, you know, we really didn't want him to leave us, and he went to Leeds, but that was his boy old club. So, you know, a lot of people understood that if Leeds came calling, he was going to go. And um, he, he he came back, Larry Mark too, and he'd been in that Sunderland till I die okay. program, yeah. and I think. He, He'd gone through hell with Sunderland, and I think it had kind of spoiled him in, in many ways. It, you know, it ruined him, and he was a bit more cautious, and he wasn't quite the same manager as we had. And we were just going through a terrible run of form with him. We, you know, Christmas we were like, really, if we'd have won the game before Christmas, we would have gone top of the league. And, and uh, Lee, this was with I remember looking at the Blackpool investment uh, that season and thinking, oh, there's some there's some good players gone in there at League One level. Oh, sorry, going back to the first time. With no, 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 last season. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I was yeah, looking at it thinking, you know, this, hmm. they, they should do all right with this manager and these set of players. Yeah, they kind of, it was really weird because he brought loads of like, I think they brought 12 players in in the Christmas period because things were going a little bit pear-shaped. And, um, you know, he got all these players in and he, I think he only played like one or two games with them. And, and then they, you know, they, they sat him off and I thought, God, they brought, you know, when players come to, you know, they come to do the interview and they say, yes, you know, I've come to Blackpool because, you know, Simon Grayson's been <laughs> telling us all about these fantastic plans he's got and how he's going to do this. In the, you, know, you know, they do, don't they? they come with that standard sort of thing where they're all, you know, the managers convinced them to come and it's all going to be fantastic. And all these players joined on this sort of thing that you know Simon was going to uh, turn it all around and then they just binned him straight off but but you know there was a lot of pressure on him because he just the results were terrible I think we'd gone through like a 12 match you know run of bad of bad games and it just had to come to an end um Jane uh you, well I don't know if you watch her videos but there was a video she went to Lincoln she came out in tears at the end of it because she just she just I mean she'd been to every away game she keeps traveling to these away games through wind rain snow hail everything and it was terrible and then the fans you know she'd gone to this game and all, all the Blackpool fans were really giving abuse at the end and she did she didn't like it you know that upset her and she came out in tears even though it was a favorite video it actually won her away day um, video of, of the year a trip to Lincoln was lovely but people it wasn't just, when she was, it people wasn't just want to see people destroyed don't they on camera and it did <laughs> yeah, anyway that's it. Critchley Lee Critchley go on yes Critchley who is he we don't know <laughs> we're not sure we're not sure <laughs> he's come he's come from Liverpool Academy he's been with Liverpool uh, Academy doing the under I think he started with the under nine under 18s under 21s under 23s he's been there for like eight or nine years he was uh, a man that actually um, Jurgen Klopp left in charge for a game and he played all the young kids in an FA Cup game and smashed somebody. I can't remember what it was, but it was you know, a big scorer with his kids. And um, Jurgen Klopp uh, said he would, you know, a man he would sort of trust with his with his club, you know, and uh, he's so highly thought of at Liverpool. And, and and when it was announced that he'd come here, that you know, there was a lot of Liverpool fans who you know were coming on to us, and they they, they were devastated. You know, the big sounds um, a bit like the Steve Cooper appointment at Swansea, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and and obviously, you know, us as Blackpool fans, um, we enjoyed the football under Holloway, which was very attacking. You remember in, in the Premier League, it was oh, just yes. basically, you know, he was jumpers for goalposts with Holloway. <laughs> he, he would just, you know, he'll score four, we'll score six. You know what I mean? He just, he, we just went for it all the time. And I can remember watching on Sky, they were calling our, I can't remember what they called our our, our defence, but we, we just didn't have one. We were just all in attack. So so there was like, oh, the, I don't know, banana defence or something, but we were just up, and, you know, going for goals all the time. And, and you love that kind of exciting attacking football. So we've watched Liverpool, everybody's watched Liverpool. It's all, you know, super exciting football, isn't it? Where they're just so fast and pass things around. And he was, you know, coming in on this wave that he was going to bring this Liverpool philosophy of football into Blackpool. But I I always think there's a bit of a snag with it when you haven't quite got those world-class players that Liverpool have. So you can have all these great thoughts about being able to 
pass it around and beat teams for pace and that. But if the players, you know, I mean, the League One players, so they're not Premier League players, are they? And there's a reason why these players that we all follow, you as, as well as us, we follow a, a team of, of players that are not Premier League players. And and, 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 you know, and Lee, when, when they we are... Premier League football, don't we sometimes? And, and when we they are it. particularly good... They're yeah. very quickly sold in the next <laughs> transfer yeah, window. Someone yeah, you comes, lose them, don't you? Yeah, the, someone comes and they're takes also them. They're all so erratic, aren't they? I always find at this level, you know, they can have a yeah, good game. Yeah, I mean, like Lee, even... You know, I think we all suffer the same pain down here. It's, it's pretty Even similar. at championship level, there's always hmm. tends to be... The ones that have stayed there their whole career, there tends to be one key floor, whether it's oh, pace yes. or decision-making or physicality. There's, there's, or, there's a reason. Yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. There is a yeah. reason for all these players and, and when we kind of shuffle them around and we bring new players in and change our deck. But at the end of the day, we kind of never really get, you know, it's only when you get those moments like Blackpool did when they got the Premier League where suddenly everything just went right and you're thinking, this is it. This, You know, I, I remember Preston, you know, being below us and then they got real you know we just thought we didn't Preston would never be above us I thought like for a generation we'd be a, <laughs> you know we'd be above Preston but sadly we were brought back to earth with a huge bumper go. we went right down um, now Preston you know above us and they've been above us for years Lee so. let me just go, bring yeah. up the split mm. screen so there's the table as it uh, 20 stands at the moment yeah with Blackpool down there in mm. 21st position one Looking win in <laughs> <laughs> the first three games. Um, Ipswich, obviously, a bit of a different start there mm. with 10, 10 points from the first three. Oh, but Ipswich right. fans will already know all about that. They will not know about Blackpool. Let me just uh, click on. on these. We'll just focus on the on the league fixtures there. Mm, so okay, can you the just, stats. Yeah, can you just briefly take me through... Uh, to the games. Yeah, Plymouth, Swindon, Gillingham and uh, yeah. Lincoln. Well, this is the thing. Um, we do pre-season. We'd come out uh, uh, every game, basically, you know, flying out the traps. You know, we were we were goals up. We were attacking teams. We, you know, we were this um, this swashbuckling team in 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 the pre-season games. And then we started off at Plymouth like like rabbits in caught in the headlights. <laughs> terrified for the first five minutes for what Blackpool fans. You, you sat there thinking. What? What is this? Uh, we the we gave away like a, a stupid corner. I think uh, Nottingham, um, who was our one of our centre halves, we had got these two centre halves, one egg potato, one uh, Michael Nottingham, who people have referred to them as the masters of disaster because <laughs> because they they're, they're just liable to a mistake, and and you know they're going to make some sort of disaster mistake. The pair of them. So we, we, we've been a bit concerned about the centre-half pairing, um, even in the pre-season, because you know, we did look a bit sus, but we looked great going forward. So we give away a corner, and of course, they score in the first four minutes. And then it was basically, it was about 80 minutes of just Blackpool, just, you yeah, know what, the, you know what it is. Be, yeah, yeah we, uh, how many did we have? There. 19 shots, we were all yeah. over them. It was just... It was just attack after attack after attack. They had a goalkeeper in uh, at, that uh, I'd already spoken to a Plymouth fan before the game because I had him on the live stream of talks and he was saying this, you know, this kid is going to be the next England goalkeeper. It's his first game, his first ever game. He's six, I don't know what he was, 18 or something. Some young kid in goals. He was like, you couldn't beat him. It was like that England game against the, what was the goalkeeper from where, where we just, we, you know, we just uh, Polish keeper, yeah, yeah. Yeah, God, you know, you just the clown, whatever he was, they kept saying, but he, he was just unbelievable. He, he was everywhere. And this keeper just got to everything we put at him, or if we beat him, we hit the post, there was a man on the line or something, you know what I mean? It just it just was one of those games and we just thought, well, you know, don't but Lee, don't, if you're gonna be downhearted like that, you would rather you would rather lose a game where yeah. you created a whole ton of chances yeah. and had a load of yeah. possession because there's something That's the philosophy, isn't it? Sustainable that you can you yes. can go at going forward. And it looks like in uh the next game here, uh a two nil win mm. over Swindon. Let me just bring that up on yes. the screen that things went um a lot better. Well. Yeah, they did. Um, this was a game where Blackpool were one of these trial teams for, you know, having all uh, having fans in. So we had a thousand fans in this game. And I think um, 
it helped the team a little bit, you know, having people cheering them on. And they made a lot of noise, these thousand fans, for quite incredibly. They did make a lot of noise for them. And uh, one of the things we've had at Blackpool is this amazing sort of support, as you probably saw in the Premier League and everything. We were, we were just, you know, we were bonkers in the Premier League. And we are, you know, if you've ever been to Blackpool, we are very loud. I, you know, I remember a cup game back in, in the early 2000s where we had like just the temporary stand down one side. Birmingham City came came to watch the a cup game. And I remember reading on the Birmingham City boards after this fan had said it, it, it sounds, well, we actually sing Seaside, which is, you know, Seaside, but just like the Seaside. But they thought it was like Zieg Heil. <laughs> it sounded like Zieg Heil and, and he wrote on it said I don't know what the Blackpool fan it sounded like they were saying Zieg Heil but he said it didn't sound like they were singing for the fathers it sounded like they were singing for the fathers fathers that's how loud we were and, and it is you know for, for a stadium that's only takes 16,000 we make a you know a, a, a noise and I, I often think as a fan you know we lifted them into the Premier League and we have that really loud support and uh, they, they got it against Swinton and it seemed to lift them and uh, we won and everybody's thinking, here we go. We're off. You know, and this is it. The dream every, is, is going to happen. We've got just, this. Just, just go quickly, on. Lee, every Ipswich yeah. fan is going to be looking at that picture. And one name is going to be popping out. Not Brett Pittman at the bottom, but Grant Ward, who we obviously yes, had. Yes, Grant had a, Ward. Had at Ipswich for a good couple of years. Actually scored a hat trick on his debut. And there was always a sense with Grant Ward that mm. there was a very good player in there. Uh, somewhere look, look at somewhere looking to get out um yeah, I, I know you only actually, have a, he hasn't actually a very escaped small <laughs> sample size it's but um mm. how, how was he how was he mm. started for blackpool um I think he's a bit mixed. I, I, I quite like, you know, if I'm if I'm being honest, I think he's all right. Uh, he hasn't, you know, pulled up many trees, but he looks decent. You know, definitely looks decent. Um, yeah, yeah, he's all right. Um, I don't think he'll do any damage to you, to be honest. He doesn't seem that player. That, <laughs> doesn't seem that player that's going that's yeah. going to do. I you know we all just, look at these ex ex players. Oh uh, yeah, you um, don't know how Ipswich oh. works. He's he's nailed on to score at least is, seven is goals in this oh, game. Honestly, great. Yeah. Well, uh, the good news for you is we haven't got Nuttall. We've we've sent him out on loan, and he only scored two goals last season. Of course, he scored them against he scored. you. Yes. Well, we've got this young lad called CJ Hamilton, who you probably see in the Swindon game. He's he scored both goals, I think, didn't he? He's a he's a left footed winger playing on the right wing who has to cut in all the time, which seems to be the way at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I don't. There's, there's something for me. I like a, a right winger on the right and a left winger on the left. A guy well, can pick it down to the byline and pull it back with his right. You mentioned can pull it back with his left. You mentioned your mate Jurgen Klopp and uh, Mr. Mane and Mr. Salah do a pretty good job of exactly what you've just described, yeah. a, a right yeah. winger coming in yeah. on his left foot. Uh, this is the third game here, mm. um, Lee, down at Steve Evans Gillingham. And again, the pattern from the third... The pattern from the, th <laughs> the first game, look at that 70% know, possession. Know, um, it does feel like there might be something sustainable building mm. here if if they can get it, it. I'm feeling looking at the numbers as an Ipswich fan, this may be the best time to play Blackpool because it looks like, well, one of two things are gonna, is going to happen Confidence here, as I always say happen. here. Either mm. results will start to match performance or performance will sadly drop down to... Results, but um, results, yeah, yeah. What what about the what about this this game at Gillingham? Dom Samuel as well. We had him on loan at uh, Ipswich, scoring two goals there. Um, slight technical difficulty there. We we lost Lee for a second, but Lee, uh, just we were in the Gillingham game and more huffing and puffing and lots of possession, and but the yeah. chance is not not taken. No, not not taken. Um, but every Blackpool fan at half time was confident that you know it's just a matter of time before we got a goal back, and then we you know we'd murder them basically because we were playing sort of that well. And we came out second half, and we just gave away. We just didn't defend at all. It was like you know uh, Keystone Cops defending, and uh, didn't close a guy down, gave him all the room in the world to just keep going, and just took a shot, and that, that was it, two 0 and we were never going to score because then you know what they're like, Gillingham under that, uh, what was he called, the manager there? Sorry, his name just gone out of my head. Uh, Steve Evans. Yeah, Steve Evans. He's just he, he is. I, I played Gillingham before with him, and they do everything they can to to actually stop time. It's like they they can just waste. Well, you know, they can just waste so much time. It's it's unbelievable. You know they. 
they don't just bring on one trainer, they bring on two trainers and it, it takes five minutes for them to, you know, to sort out a- any sort, you know, and then the player gets up. The and, dark you know, hearts. Yeah, substitutions take forever. Free, yeah. you know, they're taking a free kick. They have four different guys come up and decide they're going to take it and walk away and come back and, and you know, throw-ins take forever. Just the whole thing. And, they, you know, they're just constantly, constantly stopping the game in every way you can and they're brilliant at it i mean it's, i mean it is a it is a dark art and he is superb at it and that's just what they did they just mm. they just wasted time and did the you know we just never really got back in the game we could never get ahead of steam going and of course we were never going to pull two goals back you know because we just we, we could have played till midnight i think and not scored it was that you know that kind of game everything we did was wrong final ball decisions were bad the whole thing so 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 we were brought back to earth again with a bump and this uh, uh this game against lincoln looks like an absolute car crash so three two home, yeah three two <laughs> home defeat here you take the lead through mm. the aforementioned hamilton grant yes. scores a penalty mm. then you're in the lead and look there's mm-hmm. luke garber as well making and we could get luke garber and grant ward uh you take the lead yep. on 82 minutes James mm. Husband, ex of Norwich, gets red carded, and then mm. you concede another penalty and an 88th minute uh, goal to beat you. But um, what just, just I am to, seeing, just, just to try to explain it to you because it is hard to understand, but uh, but I can't explain the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, go for and, and loads of why. loads of shots at goal and possession again. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? So. So obviously, as Blackpool fans, we're thinking, well, we you know we're not travelling away very well, but obviously we're good at home. So there was, you know, there's still a lot of hope, hope, hope in this game that we were going to, you know, win this game. And um, we were brilliant. Blackpool set off fantastic. We, you know, we could have been two or three up. Uh, we scored a goal. Great. We won nil up. And then with the one thing that they did in the, the half was that they were a little bit quick on the counter-attack, Lincoln. So they were a little bit s- scary, but we coped with it, you know, if ever they did break away. But on this occasion, we got this young lad, Dimitri Mitchell, in who's come from United, a left back I, I think he's more left winger than left back actually but he did the typical thing where in the Sorry, box yeah lee before we get comments just don't don't call them united they they, they get so the, the fans of every other united in the world oh, <laughs> will we'll fill manchester up manchester united manchester yeah. there you go manchester united i once yes. made the mistake of calling bristol city bristol Never uh, heard the end of it. No. Sorry, go yeah. ahead. So he's a man. He's a Manchester United. You know, came through the academy <laughs> of United. <laughs> we picked him up on a free. But he's a good. You know, he's a good. He looks a good player. But for some unknown reason, he just instead of kind of just shield. You know, just just shepherding the ball and just making sure he didn't get a shot and just you know keeping tight. He went in, and of course the player went down. Dead soft penalty. They get a penalty. It's one one. So we should have been winning at half time, really, but we weren't. We went in. All, all square and then to the credit uh I, I thought lincoln were a lot better in the second half and I, I would have said they were the better team in the second half even though it was a bit you know it was a bit more end-to-endy you know it wasn't quite as much we, we weren't dominating like we were in the first half and lincoln you know showed that they were a de- decent side um and then really if, if you know and i was getting a bit moany you know i was starting to moan and groan and you know <laughs> this is my uh <laughs> glass awful was coming into this live stream and i was saying we're gonna lose you know and all this sort of stuff i can see it coming there's only gone one team gonna score because it just looked a bit more threatening and it did look like we were hanging on a bit and then we scored we scored um, a little bit against the runner play we had a corner it was like the second phase of the corner and Demetri mitchell scored the goal so we kind of you know compensated for his so we're thinking eight minutes to go it's in the bag we have a, a simple ball out from the keeper to the right wing, who it's uh, uh, to the right back, who then put a simple ball, just a simple ball to husband, who trapped it five yards. It kind of bounced off him straight to a Lincoln player, 25 yards out, who then just went for goal. And he, he tried to catch him up because he'd obviously got past him straight away because he turned and he'd gone past him and he was behind him and he just kind of stumbled over him and the two of them went over in the penalty area and that was it. He got sent off penalty. So we're down to 10 men, 2-2. Two, two. And then for some bizarre reason, uh, I think it was at Pateta, it, it was a ball he should have just in, he should have just w- watched it go out of play. 
because there was nobody with him. Right? He, you know, he just had to shepherd it out, you know, shepherd it over the line. It was a goal kick to Blackpool. But for some reason, he didn't. So he, he got a touch on it and we give away a corner. And from the corner, um, they had a, a centre-half, I think, up scored it. And he, and Lewis, he actually had... Lewis yeah. Montma. Yeah, and he had the time to actually do three keepy ups in the area <laughs> and score with a, like a P roller underneath the goalkeeper, oh un God. unchallenged. And you're thinking, I'm watching it. I'm thinking, what am I? What? What? Why is this? Cool. I, could, I couldn't honestly. F Blackpool fans have not actually got over it. I, I don't think it was so bad. I think people have been having nightmares about it. I think I've had a few really bad dreams about it this week. Just seeing seeing that it's so bad. I can't, You've got to watch it to just believe it. It's incredible. So, so, so we've brought two centre backs in this week. You'll oh, be happy to know. <laughs> okay, who? So we've got a guy called Daniel Ballard from Arsenal. Okay, interesting. Uh, oh, Good pedigree. Uh, who's yeah? He's been captain of the under twenty threes. He's an international. I wonder if he played against us in the. Um, we had their under twenty ones in the. Um, in the EFL trophy. Um, I'm not no, sure he did no. actually, because strangely enough, we took their other um centre back from ah. that game, um, uh, ah, Mc Mark McGuinness. So right. uh, I doubt he will play Lee, but I mean, we'll talk about teams in a minute. Let me just let me just bring that up. Um, Daniel Daniel Ballard is called. Let's see uh, if he's there. He played on he played on Tuesday night in our cup game against Accrington and he looked. Yeah, he did good. not play in that game. Maybe he's overaged for an under twenty one game. Anyway, who was the other centre half? Um, that the came other in? one we've we've brought in. We brought in a, a guy called Daniel Gretterson, who's come from Ali Sons. Is it a double A L E Sons, a Norwegian team? He's I was going to say he's sounded Scandinavian. He's an Icelandic international. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I think you'll be facing, well, we have to have one of them at least because, of course, her husband got sent off. And he was only playing, he's really a left back, so he was playing centre half. And he, he'd had a good game until he just didn't trap this ball, didn't take the pass correctly. And But it says up here, husband played in, or is this because it's a different competition he was allowed um, to play? I think it's because, I think it's because of the time. I think it's so many days after, which means he. he oh, missed okay. Touch. I think that's what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm not, okay. I'm not sure. Not sure yeah. Hmm. Um, so, well, so, with that being said, you've kind of parlayed quite nicely. And let me just bring up that team that played against Lincoln. Uh, hmm. So we can see there we're expecting uh, a four-three-three um, formation with inverted wingers. We're expecting yep. you to have loads of the ball and maybe hmm. create. Fair amount of chances, but um, no final ball. It's, oh it, it's the final ball with Blackpool. You, you, you'll see how many of those players. Um, can you see the image I've got up there, Lee? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me let me read. Yes, through. I can see it. Uh, yeah, I can see it. How, how many of those players um, do you I see? Can't. Well, it's probably easy if you just tell me who's not going to play. Let me go through them. So, um, go Maxwell in goal. Will he play? Yeah. He yeah. Will. Um, and they've got back four of Mitchell, husband. Uh, egg potato and turton, egg potato. We're starting to call him <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will that be back four? <laughs> no, it won't. So, so we've got left back who Mitchell. Mitchell, I have a feeling, um, that he Garbutt. may go, he may go with Garbutt, the, you know, this lad from Everton, this left back from Everton. He, he well, we may had him on push... loan last season, so he's guaranteed to score, yeah. Yeah, so he may go with him and he may move Mitchell up on a bit more into the midfield on the left of midfield because cause I, I think he looks a better. He's very fast and very attacking, and he you often see him in the box, even though he's a left back. So he's an attacking. Mm. So, so I think as a left mid, I, that's what I would do. I don't know whether. And what about the rest of the back four? Well, obviously, husband won't be in. Um, Ek Pateta. Again, masters of disaster is one of the pair. So uh, he came, he, he's come from Leighton Orient, him, and uh, Leighton Orient fans were devastated to lose him. He, he mm. thought we'd got an absolute, you know, wonder centre off, but he has got a mistake in him. So I think you may well find um, this. Well, we don't know if he's got international clearance yet, but this Daniel Gretterson, we're not okay. sure about the international clearance. So it may well be Daniel Ballard in there. 
maybe. Okay. With um, Arteta, um, or it could be both of them. It, you, you may change the whole, both centre halves. But potentially from an Ipswich point of view, it's very likely to be either an untried centre half pairing or one that's um, still trying to get to grips yes. with this Critchley um, style. Yes, and of course we've got this um, Forest lad, Jordan Gabriel, who uh, uh, now he looks quite good, though, doesn't he? He's... Yes, he does look very yeah. good. So I, I, I can see him being the right back, and um, yeah. Doors, you know, D Door from Door on Tour has told us that that he's, he's a very good. Yeah, player, I think so. Yeah, you know, I think he looked good right, on Tuesday actually. night. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, what about good. the midfield three? It says Anderson, Robson, Ward. Hmm. Well, we're liking this Robson. He's come from Sunderland. This Ethan Robson's a good player. Who's the other two? Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, Ward is going to have to play against you, isn't he? You've already, of course, yeah, yeah. You've already said and... he's going to score seven, so how <laughs> he's in. Who's the other one we got in there? Uh, Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, yeah, we like him. Yeah. Okay. Keshi Anderson, he's he's built like a tank. He's come from Swindon. He's he's really muscly. He looks like he looks like he pumps weight out uh, all the time, but he's a pretty exciting player and we like him, yeah. He's one of my favourites. Um, and the front three that started against Lincoln was Labala, Yates and Hamilton, who you've already bigged up. Yeah, Hamilton is exciting. You will see he's just, he's so fast. He's really quick, this lad. Um, and but, let me, let me get this right, Lee. the starting to see that, and, you know, the double but, doubling up on him. Sorry to interrupt, Lee. Let me get this right. Mm -hmm. He's going to play down the right, but he's going to yes. try and get cool. in between. He's not going to go around the outside. He's going to try and be in between the Ipswich right back and the Ipswich right sided centre back. Coming yeah. in on his left, right. Okay. Yeah, he's always trying to bring it in on his left. Um, Interesting. Really, okay. Which, which is, you know, if you talk to my dad, bless him, who who was a who believed that, you know, because he because he obviously he watched, you know, Stanley Matthews and Morty and you know the t team of then, and he always his philosophy of football was, you know, you, you get a right, you know, a winger that takes a defender on, gets it to the byline and pulls it back. And he always said that when you pull the ball back and it comes back, when the strikers are coming in, the ball's coming at them rather than behind them or over them. And, and, and they're going to hit a ball that's coming at them. So, so when they hit it, you know, it's an easier ball to hit, harder to defend because it's coming, you know, you know the defender, it's coming past him to the forwards. And it, that, that's how my dad always believed football should play, brought to the byline, cross them, Whereas we don't, we seem to cross balls in over the top and, you know, centre arse, just knock them away. And, you know, it's, and, and that's how we are. But even when we had last, last year, that Liam Feeney, who did, you know, <laughs> who amazingly did we also that. had we on got loan at, at Ipswich, yeah, yeah um, we, a few seasons back. But, okay, we well. Ball in that way, yeah. So, so we've got that. I mean, I would switch him, actually. I, I, I put him on the left, but anyway, he's on the right. It sounds like your manager has a very solid idea of what he wants to do. And yes. uh, and as we've seen with all of these teams that play the inverted wingers, it's then the job of the fullbacks to go past them and actually be what would then be the old, old school winger. So I guess that's the idea. Um, I suppose the question I've got for you, um, Go longer term, forgetting yeah. about this game, mm -hmm. is there's probably quite a nice upside if this goes well for Blackpool, isn't it? In respects of yeah. that, if you can start to play this system and start to convert lots of possession, and clearly what we can see is lots of shots on goal into results, then there's there's something there. What is the likelihood of that actually happening, though? Well, this is the thing. Um, I've got to keep positive about this. Um, I just have to because the football is is so good that the, 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 you've got to believe it will come tr come through. We lost, as you probably know, Armand Nangele in the summer. He's his contract ran out, and he was never going to stay. And you know he he's gone. But we haven't really replaced. Nangele and um we've got you know we haven't got really a tall strikers we've got Gary Medin who you know we we sing as the goal machine but we're starting to think we may change it to the washing machine but well, I was very maybe, surprised he because maybe get, that's what he should he be doing get a championship gig, um, yeah, he, Lee. I thought he was too good for league one personally but I think he was injured last season I think he was carrying a bit of a knock and he's looked quite sprightly when he's come on, but he's only had cameo roles. He's only come on for the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But every time he's come on, he's, you know, he's looked, he's looked impressive, but he just hasn't scored a goal. We've got this lad called Jerry Yates, who we, who we, who was a Rotherham striker. He was on loan at Swindon. They really wanted him. Looks a good player. You know, he doesn't look a bad player. He looks a good player, but he just can't get a goal. 
just he hit the post um, on uh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, he did. He had a great shot uh, from the edge of the box, beat the keeper all ends up, and it just come off the inside, you know, at the mm-hmm. bottom of the post. And but you know, if he'd have got that. It could have been a different game on Saturday because because you know it could have been two 0 up, um, but he just you know he just I don't know it, and I don't always think it's his fault because if people are watching my live streams and I, I'm saying it all the time I'm starting to sound like a broken record because I just go you know Blackpool on the attack cross across too far uh, Blackpool on the attack cross, just too far oh they put it out for a throw in on the other side oh my god and it's every cross is like this it's too far it's too short it hits the first man it just you know we take a free kick it's into the wall it's just everything we're doing at the moment is you know corners are too you know hitting the first man at the you know the first defender on the post and it's just everything that that they're they're doing is just that final ball in that final delivery and i just think what are they doing on the training pitch because you know they've got everything right we're we're passing it around lovely we keep you know but we just we just can't probably just just now down to repetition and repetition and keep on practicing the plan and hoping it will hoping it'll come come won't it we don't want to get relegated and it's you know (laughs) we're down we're down there aren't we it's not the end of the table yeah it's Look, only early. It's early. If you speak to any Ipswich fan, as we're up there, sorry, let me just yeah. bring the bring the table up one more time. <laughs> Nobody yeah. will be counting any proverbial chickens. I mean, we're in third position, but obviously Lincoln and Hull, uh, Lincoln, who you gave a pretty good game by the looks of it, mm. um, are up in that top two as we look now. Um, so... Look, hopefully, we beat guys. You last that's... season, didn't we? We beat you last season. In um... the yeah, it would have been quite close to lockdown, wouldn't it? I, I don't yeah. remember it being one of the last games, wasn't I've it? I've done a great video on that. Actually, it was a brilliant video uh, because we'd just beaten Bolton with, with a last minute, you know, a last minute goal, you know, last kick of the game goal on Tuesday, which uh, we'd had an argument uh, me and Jane because she was livid. She she was she was coming out of the game so angry because. We were we were playing Bolton, who were you know they were garbage, weren't they last season? And we were playing Bolton. It was a local derby, but they were a rubbish team. And and really, we should have been out of sight. And they put us through hell in the second half. And we scored with the last kick of the game, but it didn't look like we were going to score. And we did. But she got so angry through the game that she, she even the goal couldn't placate her. You know what I mean? She was just <laughs> she was she was just fuming. She was just have almost no fury. In, whereas I was, you know, for me. If you get a last-minute goal, you know, in, in you know, injury time, you know, winner, it's like it, it gets rid of all the anger and all the anger that you've got inside. Just it's like a, it's like an eruption, like a volcano where it just all goes and you're going mental and all the rest of it. And I came out buzzing, you know what I mean? So, so, so we had Team Lee versus Team Jane. I did the video on that because I was trying to find out if people had come out angry or whether they were like me had just gone mental and it's one of the, you know those games are the games you remember forever aren't they those last minute winners because they don't come very often when they no. do it's fantastic uh, and then of course we played you and we did the same thing didn't we and unbelievably it came from your attack where it was one on one with it, our yeah. keeper it was it was one on one with the keeper and Maxwell just pulled a wonder save off picked it up threw it out it went down the wing do you know and, I think and, and that was that I think that was one of the games before lock- lockdown. That might have even been the last game. It before. was the very, very last game. Was, yeah, because I, I remember yeah, I interviewed quite a few in, in Ipswich fans in that video. There's quite a few interviews with them, and they were all um, they weren't. You know, you weren't very happy because because really you were top. We've been on a flying long run. You, yeah, you had. And I think yeah. you had a couple of strikers out as well. They were all saying that, uh, and there's a few complaining about the owner. They liked him, but they didn't think he was investing. Uh, well, and I actually spoke to Nick Muller, who's always coming on my channel. He's a he's, he's an Ipswich vlogger, and I interviewed him, you know, before that game. And they were confident, I think, that they were going to beat us because of you know because of our run. But uh, as, as it went, you know, it went. We just got the winner and uh, gave it back to the Ipswich fans because because they were all singing at us. Funny enough, they were all singing at us because uh, you know you know because fans are leaving at the end of the game. It looked like you know Ipswich were on top and fans had had enough and they start walking out don't they and they're all singing is this is there a fire drill they're all singing this out <laughs> so of course we <laughs> shoved them with a last minute goal and they were then all you lot were all streaming out and we we're all giving it my, back yeah, is there my a normal, fire drill it was my just, normal yeah. rule it's the only way to it. Yeah, the only way to never lose at football banter is to not get involved. <laughs> yeah, I know. Once you start <laughs> saying yeah. things, you, you think, oh, open, I wish. Open Just open don't say up. that, don't you? Don't say it. Don't say it. And you know it's going to come um, back to haunt you. Right, thank you go. so much for coming on and giving us the um, giving us the sort of heads up 
on Blackpool uh, and what we can expect. I think just from our gonna chat. He's going to murder us. He's going to murder us. We're dreading it. <laughs> We're just so dreading it on Saturday. Just from, our, just from our chat, the worst case scenario is yeah. you're going to click and you're going to beat us. And the best case scenario for Ipswich is you're still going to take a little bit more time to get where you're going. Um, Lee, thank you so much. Just give one more plug for the channel and yeah. also give a plug for the uh, Monday night show. Which Yeah, um, yeah, because and yeah, we do it. Find we, yeah, go on. We it, it, It's Lee Charles TV on YouTube. And on a Monday night, we do the Football Vloggers podcast. And uh, Benjamin Bloom comes on uh, most weeks, don't you? And uh, we love him for his knowledge. And I've made sure that I had as much things down written down here as i could possibly have because i knew i knew i was going to be on with you and i'm thinking oh jesus benjamin bloom knows everything about everything so man yes <laughs> i bet i better know me stuff when i come on so i've just made sure that i was my mind was was clear but the you know the games we've talked about are obviously um are clear in my mind they've just been a bit of a disaster for us but a couple uh, of other hopefully we click on saturday sorry Ipswich fans hopefully we do click. a couple of other good league one vloggers um from fleetwood and from doncaster that have been on there so it is actually quite a, a good job. place for some sort of league one league one chat so um yeah. thank you and we've started doing a phone in now we've we've got the phone in coming in on it so if you're on people can uh, phone in to you if you're on if you know if we're doing a phone in through and talk to you live so it's, it's totally live we go out live warts and all Try and make sure that door doesn't eat Chris and stuff like that. But apart from that, it's a it's a great show, isn't it? We enjoy it. It's, it's a good laugh. And yeah, come and join us. Come come and watch Benjamin on uh, and the guys on there on a Monday night, eight o'clock till ten. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, plugs are done. Plugs all done as ever on the Blue Monday channel. Please hit the subscribe button for us. Uh, remember, we are a podcast, but we're working towards using this uh, live YouTube technology. But our main show is going to be out on Monday. I can't for the life of me remember. Will this, what, when will this be on, Benjamin? Just, uh, just um, this, Will it be on YouTube, this, or is it just purely yeah, podcast? It'll be on YouTube, um, right, okay. and our main show will go out on, um, on Monday on Monday morning, and you can support us via the support uh, facility on the Acast app. Thank you again, Lee, for coming on. And we best hope of, everybody... best of luck to it, Switch, but not for Saturday, yeah, obviously. Everybody. <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoy the game, those of you watching yeah. on iFollow. And um, check out our coverage after the fact um, if you want it for free <laughs> for those of you who don't want to pay for iFollow. But um, thank you for watching. Thank you again, Lee. And we will see you all uh, for the flagship show on Monday. Listen.